Hi, this is Ennis from Never Stop Trucking. In this episode, we will be talking about a few things. And as the title suggests, uh, we will be switching topics. So stay around for all of them. The first uh, topic that I want to talk to you about is the new DAT requirements for dispatchers. If you're a dispatcher and uh, you're trying to get signed up for DAT, now they have a new requirement, which is that uh, your agreement with the owner operator that you have, and you have to send them that, uh, it will have to show that you're actually paying for the DAT account that you're using. It says that you, the owner operator that you are uh, dispatching has to give, give you a seat on their account or make a new account for you. And that's the only way that you can get DAT right now as a dispatcher. But now they went even one step further saying that uh, the agreement that you have uh, with that owner operator will uh, have to show that you're actually paying for the DAT account yourself, uh, uh, meaning like you're reimbursing them uh, for that fee because they have to pay it. It's uh, in their name, the account, so they actually pay it, but you have to show in the agreement that you're uh, reimbursing uh, them that money. Another thing I want to talk to you about uh, is uh, uh, a new app that Emro is building for Usora Express for our trucking authority, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, we will have more details soon, like I will uh, talk to you in details about what the app can do, but this is really great, and it has some AI components in it. It will recognize the, the information from the rate confirmation. It will help us put that information into the TMS. It will extract it by itself puts it there, we can uh, do invoices, we can do driver settlements, uh, we can have a load board uh, with everything uh, that's um, that's needed for a dispatch. It also connects to Motive because we are using Motive ELD. It will connect and we can see uh, where all the drivers are at all time in that app. And then the driver has their own account and uh, the driver can access everything themselves we we have we will have a like driver qualification folders all the truck and trail information for everyone there and and the driver or the owner operator will have uh, access to uh, their own information like about their truck about their trailer about them all the loads that they have done all the trips uh, with the rate confirmations and uh, with the pickup and delivery information, it will pop up in a map. They can just go to the map. It will tell them like how many miles they have uh, to the pickup and how many hours. Uh, we can upload the driver settlements to, to there. They can look it up. Uh, they can uh, take a picture of uh, the POD when they deliver. And then we have access to all of that, and which is really cool and more. He's still working on it, but we are still using it. Uh, but it's not 100% done. Another thing I want to talk to you about is uh, how some brokers, and this is really, this is really sneaky, like uh, Alan Land, for example, uh, they're hiding uh, their high value loads. How? Well, when they post a load, they don't tell you like that this is a high value load and that you need uh, 250K in insurance or 150K or more. Right, uh, most uh, trucking authorities will have a hundred thousand dollars in cargo uh, insurance, and that's most of the time enough uh, for a load. But sometimes you will get this high value load, and they used to uh, put in into the comment section that this is like you need to have 250k in insurance. That way, we don't waste our time like calling them and asking them about load, and then they're answering the phones, etc. But now they don't put that information there uh, uh, anymore. And I was talking to Ambro and, and then he said, well, this way they can advertise that load as, as a normal load, right? They don't have to pay more because it used to be that if you have a load that requires 250K in cargo, that this load will usually pay better. And most companies that uh, have that kind of insurance, they will pay more for cargo in order to expect more money, uh, a better payment for such loads, right? Makes sense, but no, not anymore. Now it's different. Now they don't advertise it. They don't just, they don't tell you. They ask you for MC number. You call them, you say, hey, can you, 
you know, give me more information about this load. And they say, okay, Leah, what's your MC number? And then they go in and they see, okay, well, you have 100K in insurance. We called Alan Land the other day, I think three or four times. Emra called them, I called them a few times. We see the load posted. They keep answering and they just come up with a different excuse of why not to give us that load to me and Emro and, and it's different people answering. And, you know, that was very suspicious to us. Like if one guy says the load is covered. Uh, one, la one guy says, no, the load needs 150K in insurance. One guy says it, it uh, requires 250K. Uh, one guy says you have to have like 10 loads done with us in the past 30 days or 20, day 20 loads, something like that. And, but the load is still posted and we keep calling and they have it, but they don't want to give it to us. Why? Why? Because the last guy said that you need to have 250K in insurance and we don't have that. And then uh, we were like, well, why don't you just say it in, in, in the posting? Well, this way, when you give them the MC number, guess what they do? Guess what they do? They go into their system and they see what kind of insurance you have. If you have 250K coverage, they're just like, okay, yeah, let's book it. You know, and they give it to you for regular rate. When they send you the rate confirmation, then you will notice that this is a high value load. But you're like, oh, yeah, well, I got a load. Well, I already have the insurance. We are good. Oh, I didn't know it was. Well, OK, let's do it. Right. So so that way they don't have to give you they, they're, they're fishing for for uh, MC numbers who already have that much coverage. And but they're avoiding to pay you more money for the load by doing it that way. I hope you understand what they're doing. So, yeah, this is what Alan Land is doing. OK. And this is not cool. When you are uh, picking up a high value load, they want you to drive usually like 200 miles without stopping. Keep in mind, if you book a load like this uh, and you do have the insurance, I would go back and demand more money or cancel the load. Like demand money, hey, this is high value load. The risk is much bigger and you're getting paid much more money, but you're trying to pay me as a regular load. You want the driver not to stop for 200 miles. They have to have a full fuel tanks and they cannot stop anywhere. Because guess what? The, the thieves are waiting there. They know where the high value loads are. They're waiting for the trucks to be loaded. They follow them. And if they stop somewhere, uh, you know, like so, uh, close to, to that city where they picked up, uh, maybe they get a rest, they go get a shower, or they park for the night, or they leave the truck unattended. They break into the truck and steal it. And then you have a big claim, right? Or, or, or even the driver can hurt or something like that, something worse. But they don't want to pay you that. And they want you not to stop for 200 uh, miles because of that. You're running, uh, as a driver, a, a great risk of, of getting robbed or attacked with that load, just so you know if you pick up a load like that. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, DAT is raising their prices, DAT board. Right now, uh, the DAT once select is 170, but they're raising it, I think, to $200 per month. Uh, but they're ra raising all the tiers. Uh, the one that I have, they're raising it to 200, just so you know. Um, I think maybe by the time this video is released, uh, they're going to raise it more. And they uh, <laughs> their excuse is like they're investing more money in into the program. Uh, I guess by giving us uh, a platform like uh, uh, the um, interface that no one likes, <laughs> that's what they're doing. And they're saying like we're we're combating uh, scam and fraud and we're investing more money in that, like which is which is ridiculous. Like uh, they just want more money. Uh, they have thousands, hundreds of thousands of accounts and you do the math of how much money uh, they're making uh, with their subscriptions and now they want uh, uh, I think it's like 30 or $25 more for each subscription. And that's a lot of money to be invested in uh, fraud prevention, right? The only way, the, the, the only thing that they're doing uh, is as far as the fraud prevention goes is uh, uh, not giving access to dispatchers. And then also they uh, implemented this uh, new rule where brokers cannot post uh, the contact numbers in the comment section. Uh, because people would uh, hijack those uh, accounts from the brokers and they would uh, make a comment say hey, like, hey, don't call that number that's on, on the account, call this number and you call them and uh, they, they sell you a fake load. 
uh, you go there, pick it up, deliver it for free, or they steal, whatever they do, uh, right? That's a video for, for itself. But DAT is saying, like, uh, you cannot put the, the contact information in the comment. Well, guess what? They still do it. Like, they, they just put in some lines or asterisks. This is it as far as that goes. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, you like this format uh, of talking about different things in one video or episode, as you might call it. Uh, Come back for more, subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.